A step up or step down is a functional baseline I'll use for a lot of patients with lower extremity complaints, particularly knee complaints. A lot of people with knee symptoms have difficulty with stairs more often going down versus going up. And this can also correlate to walking downhill versus walking uphill or flat, for example. But a step up can be accomplished by using any number of things in the clinic. I'll use this for going up and down. If we need to make it higher or lower, we can. Some people I have step up onto a chair or up onto a big box because that's what provokes their symptoms. A functional baseline is something we take in part two of my orthopedic evaluation. We're gonna take range of motion, strength, nerve tension, and usually a functional baseline, something we can recreate in the office so that we can use it for cause and effect testing for repeated movement testing. Now, in traditional mainstream kind of orthopedic thinking, that functional baseline isn't really gonna change in five minutes, 10 minutes, or 15 minutes. But with, with repeated movement testing as, as this kind of living and breathing orthopedic test, I often see functional baselines change very quickly. Obviously, if someone has a knee complaint with stepping down, and we do a repeated movement test, say repeated knee flexion, and it gets worse, then we abandon repeated knee flexion as an investigation for treatment. Maybe we'll look at repeated knee extension, or maybe hip internal rotation, or, or hip flexion or extension, or lumbar or SI movements. I find a lot of people, especially if the knee pain is bilateral, and especially if the knee is not lacking in range of motion and extension or flexion, have knee symptoms due to mechanical reversible problems in the low back. But again, we figure it out by using repeated movement testing. Take those baselines in part two, including a functional baseline, like stepping up or stepping down, doing a deep squat, jogging in the hallway, do a repeated movement test, and reassess the effect on the functional baseline. If we're using just orthopedic tests like ACL ligamentous tests or empty can tests or things that are diagnostic in nature but don't really change the presentation of the patient, we don't expect these things to change. But repeated movement testing is very different. If we think that the problem is mechanical, and I find that 70 to 80% of orthopedic disorders are, then the line of investigation becomes repeated movement testing. Which repeated movement of the joint will positively affect not only a functional baseline like stepping up or stepping down, but the range of motion, the strength, the nerve tension, and of course, the general presentation of symptoms, either at rest or with activity. If I don't think that the orthopedic presentation is a mechanical joint derangement, I am not expecting things to change very quickly. For example, if I think that the diagnosis is a tendinopathy, I would not expect me to do something in the clinic and then for the tendon pain with loading to change rapidly in a matter of minutes. I wouldn't expect something to change if it's arthritic in nature immediately. I wouldn't expect something to change if it's structural or even something smaller structurally like a muscle strain or ligament sprain. Those things aren't going to change significantly in minutes, but mechanical joint presentations, when a joint is tweaked and we need a specific direction or two to get it moving back on track, so to speak, those types of disorders in orthopedics will change significantly in minutes. Maybe not abolishing pain, of course, with a step down or step up, and maybe not restoring range of motion by 50%. But if something's been there for a while and we get a 20% or more reduction in overall presentation in a matter of minutes, then that becomes a test that I'm most curious about. And we repeat that movement at home over the course of 48 hours on a repeated basis to really know the impact.